Turn attention uh, before kickoff in El Clasico to the local league, UAE Arabian Gulf League, uh, was into match day two of the brand new uh, delayed season, uh, 2020 into 21. Goals are plenty uh, on Thursday night, Chris, and then yesterday was all about draws and away wins. <laughs> Dra- draws and away wins, exactly that. I think it was 29 goals we had in the seven games on match day one. Fantastic start to the campaign. I was at the Zabil Stadium, Al Wassel's 4 1 home defeat to Abana Yas side. I'll say it right. Now, I said it then, they're the team to beat for me this season. And one man who is keeping his BDI on it all, it is Pedro Carrera. He is a commentator, a man that, uh, well, he works for the league, he works for Al Wassel, a man that knows all things Arabian Gulf League, and he joins us live on the line now. Pedro, a very good evening to you, my friend. Hi, good evening, Chris. Good evening, everyone. Great to have you on the line, Pedro. And, and let's perhaps start with Banias. I said it a little earlier. Four-one victors at Al Wassel on match day one. Very good. Two new Argentines in the middle of the park, Suarez and Jimenez. They've got João Pedro leading the line, and it was João Pedro again coming to the fore. A three-one win over Fujera. Are they the team to beat this season for you, Pedro? Well, they, they, I believe they are the dark horses. You you also mentioned that before. Um, I, I will not say, uh, at least for the time being, that they are title competitors, but uh, they are obviously the main team right now. Um, it's not just about the individual quality that they have, obviously. It's uh, the collective, the team, the teamwork they have, the consistency, the way they they applied pressure, the way they were aggressive, they were the way they were fit in the matches the, that they ha- they have played. And obviously then, on top of that, also the, the individual quality you mentioned. Right now, I can say that they are the most impressive side for me. That is, is correct. Let's talk a little bit as well about Al Wassel because they were beaten 4-1, as I say, on that opening match day weekend. Lorentu Regekamp, the Romanian, has come in for a little pressure. Still a, a man and a, a figure that polarises opinion amongst Al Wassel fans. But give Al Wassel credit where credit's due. They travel to Hatta, they get a man sent off inside three minutes, and yet they still come away with the three points. A very impressive 4-2 win. What did you make of it all? Yeah, it's as you said, it was impressive. It was impressive uh, precisely by the way it was achieved because uh, playing with uh, 10 men by, since minute two or three and away, an away match against a team that also needs to win, like Hatta, because Hatta is uh, bottom of the table, so obviously they needed to have the points. It was it was a very good win for Alwazel, especially in terms of morale. Um, again, Alwazel, I would not say that they are in the middle of the main title contenders, but even due to the history of the club, they are always a title contender. And uh, I think Alwazel's squad is good enough to go for the for the season, and uh, they will be for sure in the meantime a tough team to beat. Uh, just they have to find now a coach that can lead us uh, on that way. One team I don't think many are talking about when it comes to the Arabian Gulf League, and perhaps unfairly, because they are the de facto defending champions. Of course, we saw last season was curtailed in March, no championship awarded. So Sharjah, despite winning the league back in 2019, they are still our defending champions. Not many people talking about them, and yet they've got a 100% start to this campaign. A late 4-2 victory over Fujera match day one. 2-1 victory this weekend over al we write them off at our pedal, do we not, Pedro? Uh, the the Charger, you know, Chris, and, and I believe you also said this before, Charger is not uh, like a good-looking team, with exception, obviously, and hats off for Igor Coronado, obviously, but um, they they don't look pretty, let's say. Uh, they don't play fancy football, but they are usually very, very effective in the way they play. I believe Wada, in this case, studied them quite well, and uh, they tried to defend narrow and somehow deep, and uh, forced uh, Charger to have the control of the game, the control of possession, and that made it extremely hard for Charger because they prefer counter-attacks, they prefer fast attacking transitions, and uh, the spaces were not there for them to explore, especially in the back of the defense. So it was from the tactical and strategical point of view, that was the game that I was on. It was a very interesting game and uh, again, Charger in the end emerged as as, uh, as the winner with, uh, with a, a rough fight 
from uh, from Wata. They also played a good game. But it's it, Charge is like this. Charge is not fancy, but they are effective and they have their way and their style, and they grab on to 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 Coronado's. Uh, you know, he's the magician, as they say, and and quite, quite rightfully so. Also, the goal scoring streak of Wellington now returned to Charge, so they will always be a team to count on. Yeah, Igor Coronado, undoubtedly, in my opinion anyway, the best player in the league. Fabio Lima runs him close. Shao Pedro at Banias, but Igor Coronado, for those of you that perhaps haven't followed the Arabian Gulf League, well worth checking out Sharjah and their number 10. Igor Coronado, who once was on the books of MK Dons. A great story, that. Let's talk Al Jazeera if we can, Pedro, because, uh, well, two games, two draws. The pride of Abu Dhabi, Marcel Kaiser, the Dutchman in charge there, pressure, um, I know it's early and perhaps I'm getting ahead of myself here but they've got big ambitions this season Al Jazeera, a 1-1 draw at home to Al Dafra, not the result that they were looking for obviously Yes, for sure it was not what they have expected also Dafra somehow is surprising me, honestly I thought Dafra this season would be struggling because they lost Jean Pedro obviously they lost their coach to Al Wahda um, so I thought that Tafra would struggle, especially now in the beginning. They are not struggling. They are doing quite well from them, for themselves. And this draw at Jazeera, it's an amazing score for, for Dafra, I guess. Jazeera, on the other hand, last, last week, I think they were okay with Nasser. Um, they only have two foreigners in their ranks. Um, Kozanovic, now one of them is, is injured. So, um, yeah, they are not having the start that eventually they would like, but uh, they still have Halfan Mubarak, Ali Mabhut, uh, Omar Abdul Rahman, so they still have lots of talent there. And let's talk match of the week in this match, week two. It was at the Rashid Stadium. It was Shabab al Ahly going up against Alain. Of course, the top two from last season when the season was cancelled at the beginning of March. Shabab al Ahly it was who led by six points. Alain in second place. It was the clash of two storied clubs in this part of the world last night at the Rashid Stadium. It did finish one apiece. Your musings on that, Pedro, did you watch the game? What did you make of it? And who of the two managers, Gerard Zaragoza and Pedro Emanuel, would have been happiest with that point last night? Well, I would say I didn't watch full full game. I just watched the highlights. Uh, but from what I understand, uh, um, it's, it's a good result for Alain. Um, they were missing, uh, I believe, Kayo and Islam Han, correct, uh, Chris? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So they are still missing some of their key players. Um, they have been struggling with many players' absence, not only due to injury, but also on national team duties. Um, so I guess it was better for Alain, and, and obviously one point on, on the road against one of the toughest opponents that they will find. I guess it's better for Alain than for Shabab Al-Ahli. But it's still quite early. We are still in the beginning. I think Shabab Al-Ahli will be a very good side. Um, obviously, they, like any other team, they have their flaws. But especially in the back, usually they look very, very, very solid. And I guess that can make a difference in terms of the league title. Um, let us wait a few more rounds to understand how it will evolve. But um, Shabab Al-Ahli, for me, is one of the main title contenders, honestly. Yeah, still no fans, of course, allowed in the stadiums. Fingers crossed that changes in the coming weeks and months. Dubai Sports, Abu Dhabi Sports, Sharjah Sports is where you can catch the Arabian Gulf League. And if you haven't tuned in before, I implore you all to do it. Just check, just check it out because the standard is far better. I truly mean that. Far better than I think an awful lot of uh, people give it credit for. Pedro Carrera, one of the men in the commentary box. Always a pleasure. Pedro, we'll look forward to catching up with you next week. Match week three next week. And what's the tie of next week? Week, what's the one we need to watch out for? For sure, the, the Bordeaux by Derby between uh, Al Wazel and Al Nasser. It will be at 9 p.m. on Thursday, 29th of October, live from Zabil Stadium, obviously behind closed doors. But uh, we, we can watch it live on Abu Dhabi Sports, Dubai Sports, Chaja Sports. It will be for sure very, very interesting to follow, Chris. Pedro, always good to catch up with you, my friend. Thank you so much indeed for your time. Last question for us. Are you watching Barcelona against Real Madrid or Fulham against Crystal Palace? <laughs> Barcelona against Real Madrid, I guess. <laughs>
with all the respect uh, for Fulham and Crystal Palace. <laughs> good on you, my friend. Always good to catch up. Our thanks to you, Pedro. Uh, and, of course, all the commentary teams bringing uh, football to uh, life here in the UAE with both English and Am- Arabic com- commentary. We'll take a short break. When we come back, team news ahead of Fulham against Palace. <laughs> 